Hello. Welcome to another episode of Will Wright's Book, which used to be Will Wright's Books. So, uh, today I am talking about some progress that I've made on the book I've decided to concentrate on and write first. So, you know, my original plan was to write 11 books this year. That's not going to happen. My first book was going to be on idiosyncratic and creative thinking strategies. And then I started getting wrist pain, and then I got this epic typing setup and everything that went with it. And then during that time, when I was getting all that set up and learning to type Dvorak a little bit, and went for six days or so without making videos, I, like I said in the last Will Wright's book videos, I thought a lot about what I actually want to write about. And so I decided what I really want to write about is what I was referring to as book two, which is a book that's a companion or a book about the talk I gave the for Papers We Love called The Most Beautiful Program Ever Written. That that's really the book I want to write right now. And so... That's what I'm I'm working on. And I also made some decisions about, um, you know, I still want that to be released under some form of Creative Commons license. Not exactly sure which one. Um, probably depend on if I want to go with a traditional publisher. MIT Press would be the obvious publisher to me since they publish all the scheme books that I, that I like, if they're interested. And they do have a new open access um, program. So I think that they are going with Creative Commons, um, no derivatives, no commercial, non-commercial, something like that. Anyway, the point is I want to make it some form of open access or sorry, I shouldn't say open access, Creative Commons. I don't know. So the, there's a licensing issue. Um, and I do want to make it <clears throat> so that people can do yeah, I guess if it's no derivatives, then people can't do translation and stuff. Anyway, I'm not sure how to figure that out. But in any case, um, I, I've been thinking about the book. And, <clears throat> you know, the, the other thing I mentioned was how, you know, I, I was having trouble making videos every day. I think I talked about that a little bit. Uh not because I don't have things to talk about, but just, you know, my schedule and uh, the environment and everything else. I, I, I can't make three videos every day. Some videos I might make more, but and also I want to keep it being fun. And that was slowing down my writing because I just wasn't writing because I wasn't making videos and I was going to record everything. So I decided I wasn't going to record writing on the book um, necessarily. I might, might talk about some, like right now, but I'm not actually going to record the, the actual day-to-day -day process. And that has helped immensely, I think. Um, and I've been writing this very idiosyncratic style. I don't know if I've written any sentences that will go in the book, um, but I'm definitely doing very serious pre-writing and organization and thinking about how I want the book to be structured, or at least one way I imagine the book. So I've got a pretty good sense now of a version of that book that I think I would like. Um, and I, I've been refining that <clears throat> the last couple of days. Uh, so I, I, I think... <clears throat> If I were to to realize what's in my head right now, you know that would be a, a good book. I think uh, maybe I can tweak it in various ways and make it even better. But I think what I have in mind is, you know, that would be a fine book. Um, yeah, and you can see, you know, so so I haven't. Uh, I've got resources that are local. It's just on my laptop. I haven't checked these in the GitHub or anything like that. 
and I do have a private GitHub repo. And right now I'm not really working in the open. I'm just just playing around with ideas and doing pre-writing. Um, yeah. So, uh, I found that we're writing in the open was, I don't know, stifling me somehow. So here, here are some files that I've created, uh, you know, beginning of acknowledgments section. That's <laughs> the hardest part of a book to write. Um, something about the story of the book, you know, how the book came about, the story of the talk, how the, the talk came about. Uh, this The talk part is interesting because it actually has um, a transcript and uh, an unedited transcript from OpenAI Whisper using that technology and then a, a transcript I'm editing, an MP3 of the talk, an MP4 of the talk. I put these on my iPhone so I can... Listen to those. I guess we've gotten into the tools I'm using here. Uh, and then I'm just writing down notes to myself. So, you know, I can imagine talking about the story of, of the talk, the story of the book, how the book came about as well. Uh, right now, I've got this basic idea. I mean, any of this could change, but this basic idea that the organization, I guess I'm working a little in the open because I'm talking about the organization I have in mind. Right now I'm thinking the organization would be, you know, there'd be some sort of front matter, forward preface type thing. And then there would be the talk. Okay, and, and I'm when I'm talking about the talk, I'm talking something based on the transcript of the talk, you know, slightly cleaned up version of the transcript maybe. Um, but basically the transcript, that would be annotated where I'd have all sorts of footnotes and references or whatever and clarifications. Uh, so that would be the, sort of the first half of, of the, the book would be the actual talk. And then um, the second half of the book, which might be much longer, I'm not sure. My guess is it might end up being quite long. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how I want the long this book to be. I don't know if I want it to be a big book or a small book. I think it's going to have a natural length that will will feel right as I'm writing the book. We'll we'll see. Um, but for the second half of the book, I want to talk about those ideas that I mentioned in the talk. You know, so if I if I talk about continuations, which I did, then have something in the second half about continuation. So you know, sort of like mini essays or mini lessons or mini descriptions. Uh, based on the topics and maybe either in alphabetic order or the order of the ideas being presented or some other dependence of the ideas. I don't know. And then I have four re forward references um, to the second half of the book for the topics that I talk about in in the talk itself. Um, so that's that's what I'm thinking. So, you know, and, and there are all sorts of topics that I've talked about. Uh, that 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 come up in the talk that at least like to point people to <clears throat> references to and and also you know explain the idea uh, because in that ninety minute talk I just I just had to mention a few things in passing but almost every topic I mentioned you could you know take at least a week of a course to learn. And for many of those things, you could take an entire course on or do research or, you know, there might be a hundred papers or a thousand papers on that topic. You know, a, a, you could spend a whole career on any one of those ideas, really. Um, so I, I would like to get into at least enough of the details and pointers where someone reading this would have some broad idea and maybe see some examples. And then they would know where to go to learn more. They'd have some intuition. Um, so that that would be part of the idea. And I think there are enough interesting ideas about programming and programming languages and computation in the talk that, you know, if I wanted to do the really big book version of it, 
you know, this almost like a self-contained primer in the core ideas of computation and programming language theory, but organized in this kind of idiosyncratic way based around this talk. And part of the idea is that, you know, not everyone can get a PhD in programming languages or computer science or read a bunch of papers on their own. Or if they are interested in really diving in, you know, where they get started, like, you know, sort of like biology, where it's hard to understand anything in biology until you have sort of the lay of the land enough, or you even know what the vocabulary is. That's a similar, you know, I think it's as, as much as in biology, but it's sort of similar with computation and programming and programming languages that, you know, if you have no idea what continuation is or what an environment passing interpreter is or call by value is or those sorts of things, then if you try reading a paper in programming languages, you're going to get lost very quickly. So if, if I could talk about those topics that come up in, in the talk, you know, if I could write about those um, in such a way that someone at least has some intuition and, you know, has some ideas, you know, some examples they can hang on to, um, maybe that would help people get unstuck when they want to learn about these things. Um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, okay, some notes on when I started noticing the talk was becoming popular and why I think the talk is special. So as usual, you know, a lot of this is me screwing up my courage, just like I had to screw up my courage to give that talk. Um, you know, one of the things where I had to screw up my courage for that talk is the night before I gave that talk, I gave a previous talk and my talk kind of bombed. Um, and, and another thing was, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I knew if I wanted to give this long talk for, for the papers we love that, you know, I was going to live code it and that was going to be hard to pull off, you know, hard in terms of timing, hard just technically in terms of like loading the right files at the right time. Um, you know, not, not making a bunch of mistakes while I'm typing. Um, if I do make a mistake, hopefully someone corrects it. All of those sorts of things, you know, those can sync a talk, especially a live coding talk. Or, or I could go way over, you know, I could, you know, be a third of the way through the talk and I run out of time. And, you know, all, all those things can, can and do happen. Um, so you part of this is, okay, if I'm going to write a book about this talk, organize around the talk, well, then in some sense, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. The, the other part where I had to screw up my courage was this is a papers we love talk. And at least to my knowledge, everyone who had given a talk for papers we love up to that point, and maybe following that point had talked about other people's papers. And this one, I was like, okay, I'm going to talk about my own papers and my own work in the context of this artifact. I really like the meta circular interpreter and lisp and, and those things <clears throat> as well. So, you know, the John McCarthy and lisp 1.5 manual, and then an extension or a new way of looking at those things based on the mini Cameron work I was doing with Dan and Oleg and all, all these other people over the many years. So, you know, there's sort of a, I don't know, <laughs> here I am, I'm going to talk about myself for the papers we love. And, and the truth is I don't love papers. I actually don't like reading papers for the most part. I prefer books to papers, or I prefer someone explaining to me what, what the idea is on, on like a blackboard. I don't actually like reading papers. Most of them are, I think, really poorly written and they don't have intuition. So what I like are ideas and artifacts and expressions of the ideas and explanations and intuition. That's what I actually like. So that was what my talk was about. But in any case, I had to screw up my courage to be willing to sort of violate uh, maybe this implicit agreement about what a Papers We Love talk should be like to, you know, sort of risk looking self-absorbed by talking about my own work and work of my, my collaborators. Um, and, 
you know, all the technical things that could have gone wrong. And that, that required a certain courage for the talk, um, to prep for that and to get ready. And also, you know, I, I hadn't prepared for that talk. I was asked to give that talk, uh, after I showed up in New York, it, it wasn't like I was going to New York to give that talk. It was more like, oh, and I don't really have time to prepare properly, which probably helped actually, um, probably helped me screw up my courage a little bit that I didn't have time to prepare or to freak out about it. Um, but it's the same with the book. Okay. So here I'm going to write a book and the book is going to literally have a transcript of my own talk. It's like, here's this magnificent book. And it's not only about me, it's about my talk, right? And it's like, literally, here's my words transcribed from my talk. And that's a chunk of the book. So that feels like, you know, uh, could be self-indulgent or it could, I could be accused of being a narcissist or whatever. Maybe true. I don't know. But I actually think that's what at least one way to write the book that would would be good because people like the talk. And, you know, I think my I, I was able to come up with a story tying together a bunch of very deep ideas about computation and then showing you know, another perspective where I, I knew that perspective really well because I had been working on it with other people. Um, that, that that was part of what people responded to. So, you know, I was like, well, you know, maybe there's another way to do it. Um, but I, I think I want to at least try this, you know, just, just write a book this way. And probably that's what I'll go with is where I actually have you know, sort of like the first big chunk of the book after the for, uh, formatter, or the um, forward matter, or whatever you call it, would would be my talk, uh, annotated, and one with like little vignettes, and trying to preserve the humor and sense of wonder, which I think is like the hard thing, you know, because because my talk was very humorous and it really reflected my personality, and I had a hot crowd. You know, it's, it's like I, I give talks the way stand-up comics, you know, perform. And it was very important that I had a hot crowd. I even had a warm-up act. People had food. Everyone was in good mood. I was in good mood. You know, soon, as soon as I told the first joke and everyone started laughing, I was like, I'm going to kill it. You know, I'm going to kill it tonight. I didn't know. I didn't know until that moment if it was going to be a disaster. And then as soon as everyone laughed at my first joke, it's like, yes, I'm going to go for it. And it worked out really well. That was the best crowd I've ever had, actually, for a talk. Um, and I and I think the papers we love organizers, you know, deserve a tremendous amount of credit for that. So, um, anyway, <clears throat> so that's the uh, the basic idea. So. So I do think that talk was special. The talk was special to me. People responded to it differently than any talk I've given. And I think differently than, you know, I was thinking, it's like, okay, is there a 90-minute long live-coded talk in front of an audience like that that covers a broad idea um, that people have responded to in quite the same way? Well, there may be, but I don't think there's a huge number of talks like that that people have responded to. And, and uh, one way I could tell that it was starting to not just become popular as a talk, but like having an effect on people was, first of all, when I started getting emails, I still get emails like you know, maybe once a week, certainly at least once a month by someone who is contacting me because of that talk. Um, probably once a week or so I hear some story about someone being influenced by that talk. So, you know, that's exactly what I wanted. Like, you know, I love these things so much and I wanted to share what I love. You know, that's, I, I think that's ultimately what came through is like, here's something I deeply love and I wanted to share it with other people, right? So that's that's the thing I want to capture. Um, and then when people, when I noticed that people were making their own version online and, there were like blog posts and people were trying to recreate all the steps. And I think I found at least four of those um, that people had reconstructed on their own. It's like, okay, that's different. This is different than uh, the other talks I've given. And, and I want to make sure that I can capture 
somehow that sense. So, so I do think the talk is special. Um, you know, I, I think I can say that talk's special without removing any specialness from anyone else's talks or from any of my other talks. I think I've given a few special talks out of many. Many talks, most of my talks were not special, uh, I don't think, but I've given maybe three or four special talks like that. Um, and uh, and I, and I want to make sure I capture that feeling. I want to capture the feeling of joy and excitement and adventure, intellectual adventure, um, and inspiration and nerd chills, as Artosis would say from StarCraft. Um, and just the sense of humor. So, you know, I was thinking metaphorically, okay, um, yeah, metaphorically, I'm, I'm going in some random order here, okay, so sorry. Sorry if you're trying to track track the uh, <laughs> where my cursor is in Emacs. Um, I'm just kind of bouncing around. But metaphorically, I was thinking, you know, really what I want is more like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Most Beautiful Program Ever Written or the Hitchhiker's Companion, or something like that, um, where there's a sense of humor mixed with a sense of awe or wonder. You know, that was the thing about Hitchhiker's Guide, is that there is a sense of wonder and awe at the universe, in addition to the humor. You know, it's got both. Um, and I think that's why people respond to it, in addition to just having great characters and stories. And I think there are great characters and stories in this in this particular talk because it's about, you know, the invention of our modern notion of computation and all the things that come with it. So, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic story. It's a story about understanding the computational universe. So that's what I want to make sure I capture is that sense of awe and wonder and joy and exploration and humor. It's got to be funny. It's got to capture some of the funniness. And so I'm going to have some vignettes that go along with, with the talk part, um, that have some humorous asides or things like that. And, uh, and then, like I said, I want the second half of the book to have a bunch of little mini tutorials or topic based, you know, essays or, or something but like when I say an essay, I don't just mean words. I mean with code and examples and pointing you to references and you know cross references, how how the ideas are connected to each other, all those sorts of things, so that someone who wants to dive into these topics deeper, um, you know, has some sort of foothold, uh, some some way for them to to bootstrap themselves a little bit further. And like I mentioned last video, I could even imagine making a set of videos about the lecture and the ideas from the, the talk, and not the lecture, the talk, and uh, the ideas from the talk and going into some detail. And I could even imagine me even making a, a series of little books or something about the different topics that come up, like uh, here's something on continuations. I don't know. I mean, I want to get ahead of myself at, at a doesn't have to turn it into a cottage industry, <laughs> but in some sense, I think it'd be possible because when it's going through part of the talk, it's like, oh yeah, I'm mentioning on purpose, you know, sort of every deep idea that I could connect having to do with computing and programming languages. So this is, you know, I guess one way to look at it is um, like the personal view videos uh, or uh, yeah BBC documentaries there's like civilization a personal view by Kenneth Clark about art and Western civilization I was like yeah that one was okay I guess um, but then there was the ascent of man a personal view by Jacob Bronowski Brunows and that one I loved I like that one more um, but what made both of those interesting to me and the same thing with the connections uh, series by James um, Burke and and Cosmos in the United States, which I think was heavily inspired by those, is that there is a personal view. This is one person's view. And that's one of the cool things about SICP. Now, obviously, that book was written by two people, but you could see that Abelson and Sussman had a personal view 
of computation that they were trying to teach. You know, um, and this thing that advice that Ted Knight gave me when I was asking him, how do I learn about molecular biology and synthetic biology? He said, find a book with one author where that author shares a specific point of view of the discipline. So this could be my point of view um, book or a point of view book that connects a bunch of ideas that otherwise might not be clear how they're connected. Um, so I, I think SICP does that extremely well. Um, I don't think there's so many books that do that, that, that go across disciplines. I mean, there are things like Types and Programming Languages by Benjamin Pierce that does talk about a lot of interesting ideas. Um, you know, so, so there are some books like that, but, but I think this is different because of the way, I don't know, it's just like an idiosyncratic way and the, fa the focus on that, that one interpreter as the object of study. Um, now, Essentials of Programming Languages does this you know, to, to some extent, but that's a textbook, right? So the, so what I have in mind is definitely not a textbook and it's much more for either self self study or someone who's just in enthusiastic or wants to learn. Um, and yeah, so, so it, it's not, not a textbook, although I do want to have some sort of exercises or challenges or things for, for people to explore on their own. Um, but I'm definitely not thinking of a textbook. It's more like self-study, more, more like the, the little schemer, the book for self-study. But, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, I also don't want it to be the little schemer. This is going to be a different, different type of beast, quite different type of beast. So that's what I'm thinking of. Um, yeah, so let me, <laughs> what are the tools I use? So I've been working very idiosyncratically and this has been one of the pleasures so far. Um, I've done a lot of, of sort of pre-writing and note-taking on my iPhone in the Apple Notes uh, app or on my laptop on the Apple Notes app or uh, scribbling down notes on a pad of graph paper uh, with a pen or uh, emailing myself in a coffee shop or just sitting and thinking in the coffee shop or curled up in bed or curled up on the couch and just thinking. Um, <clears throat> or with my laptop on the couch or the bed, you know, uh, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to download an MP4 of my talk um, or convert that to MP3. And that turned out to be a little tricky to generate a high quality MP4 actually. Um, you know, there, there wasn't an official transcript on YouTube for the video. And I wanted the MP3 so I could get a transcript. And, you know, so, and then also figuring out the software to get a good transcript. It's a surprisingly good transcript, actually. Um, you know, sure, it made some mistakes like collats and stuff like that. But, the, you know, a lot of those terms I'm not surprised, especially since I wasn't always speaking clearly. So I've been going through and cleaning up the transcript um, pretty easy, especially since the transcript has timestamps. That's really nice. I think it'd be pretty easy for me to get a high quality cleaned up transcript um, without a whole lot of typing. Uh, in fact, it worked well enough that I've considered things like in the past, if I wrote things out longhand on a paper, like if I want to write a section, I wrote on a paper, then I have to type it in. Now I've got my keyboard set up and, you know, I can do it, I think, without wrist pain. But in the past, that was like a real problem. But now I realize if, if I actually wrote it out longhand, I could just, you know, record a video on my laptop or iPhone and then, you know, use uh, an app on my on my Mac to do the transcription using Whisper. And I'd probably get a, a very high quality first draft that I could edit without too much difficulty um, and clean up. So, you yeah, know, I don't know. I mean, I, maybe I'll end up doing that. Um, 
Yeah, so just very idiosyncratic, just using whatever I need, you know, um, working on the couch, working on on the bed, uh, at the coffee shop, you know, going to sleep. So that, those are tools I'm using. Tools uh, I haven't used yet are the fancy keyboard and all the setup. I mean, I'm using that right now, but... You know, my uh, laptop stand and the Apple trackpad 2 and the vertical mouse and all that stuff. My wrist guards. haven't used those once um, for at least this pre-writing. I'll call it pre-writing. I mean, I'm actually writing some sentences at this point, but they're not, you know, I'm not worrying about whether or not they're going to go in the book. I'm just writing down the ideas and what I have in mind. haven't used the, the, the fancy keyboard at all. Um, but I think that's fine. I mean, the whole point of this was to get me unstuck. And, you know, um, I, can, I actually look at the Kilo Tube challenge and getting the fancy mic and the boom arm and making all these YouTube video, videos on the fancy keyboard. All that stuff is a way to get me unstuck so I can write books because that's why I want to do or at least write this book, you know. And after this book's over, uh, I'll think about what I want to do next. I mean, I might think about it at some point, but the point is, uh, you know, if if all of those things, if these videos that I'm making and the keyboard and the, the microphone and all that, if really the end product is to get this book out the door, then that's worth it to me because that, that was the main thing I wanted to do this year was write a book. And... So I've already made a lot more progress. Um, so I, at, some, at some point, I almost certainly will do a fair amount of typing, I think. And so I probably will use the keyboard quite a bit. But it certainly removed the excuse that I can't write the book because my wrists are going to hurt or something like that. And at the same time, I think I made the right call in not trying to record writing this book because, like I said, I'm writing it when I'm falling asleep at night or, you know, on the couch, I'm downloading software to try to do transcriptions or stuff like that's not, that's not, you know, it's not me sitting in my fancy chair in front of my fancy keyboard. This is me doing whatever I need to, to make progress on this book, which is what I, what I need to do. Um, <clears throat> okay. What am I finding easy and what am I finding hard so far? The um, easy parts so far, well, well, first of all, I will say, you know, like, I, like I mentioned before, I've, I've worked, you know, I, I've done a fair amount of writing. I wrote a, you know, PhD dissertation. I have written a number of papers or co-written a number of papers, co-written two editions of The Recent Schemer. Uh, and I've tried to start, I mean, I haven't tried to start, I've started writing books uh, many times, actually, on my own. Many, I don't even know how many, at least a dozen books I've tried to start on my own, and some I made some progress on, and every time I abandoned them. And I'll say that, you know, in some sense, when I would start a book on my own, you know, there was this initial feeling of excitement but I was looking at some of my notebooks I have <laughs> where it's like, oh, yeah, it's great. I'm going to write this book. And I look and literally it's one page of the notebook or maybe two pages of the notebook. And then I abandoned the project. That was, that was it. That's as far as I got. I was like, ah, I got distracted by something else. Um, the dissertation was hard to write, even though I'd written papers or co-written papers and had a programming language and all this stuff and had co-written a book. The dissertation I found really hard to write. Um, I only got through it through working on it every day for many, many hours and having a, you know, developing over a period of a week, I think, an extremely elaborate outline. Um, you know, it, it, it was hard. It was really hard. Um, I eventually finished it and, you know, I think it turned out fairly well. This feels different so far. Now, maybe maybe there's a honeymoon stage, and I know that there's famously a stage in most books where 
I've read that it's a third of the way through the book, according to at least Wesley, uh, Dean Wesley Smith, uh, when he's talking about, I think, mostly uh, fiction novels, but maybe that's true for nonfiction as well. The third of the way through, you really have have sort of a crisis of faith and you think it's, you're never going to finish it and it's no good and you can't write and you just want to give up. Um, and, and and that might happen here. But I will say this feels qualitatively different than any of my other attempts. Uh, there was one book I started writing on called... Um, <clears throat> Was it the Alpine Guide to Relational Programming? So sort of like Alpine Climbing, where you carry as little with you as possible. And the idea was to get to the relational interpreters for program synthesis. You know, once again, it's related to the talk, um, most beautiful program ever written. But to get to that as quickly as possible. And so I had this idea that maybe I can teach the minimum of Mini Cameron while I teach the minimum of scheme and the minimum of metacircular interpreters and the minimum of metacircular interpreters written in, in mini Canron, you know, all kind of together in this interleave fashion where it only introduced the tiniest part of scheme and the tiniest part of mini Canron. And I'd build this simple, simple interpreter, a little bit like Aziz's, Aziz Gulom's, um, tutorial on writing compilers, incremental approach to to uh, compiler construction, I think was the name of that paper in Scheme Workshop, uh, where you just add one form at a time to language uh, for your compiler, <clears throat> build it up over time. It's a little bit similar idea. And and that's that's a book where I was waking up every single morning, working on it for, you know, at least 45 minutes and sometimes several hours. And I, I really was waking up early each day to work on it. And I made some progress and I built all this infrastructure and, you know, did some outlining and I, I got stuck. And I don't even know if it was a third of the way through, but, you know, I got stuck and I threw it away. And I think part of the problem was there, you know, it's more like I had a, a technical trick, you know, in terms of the writing. It wasn't like, okay, I'm going to write this in the way that the ideas need to be expressed. It was more like, yeah, it's a, it's a real pain to try to teach all this stuff to someone. It takes a long time. So I'll just take a shortcut and, and maybe I can do this technical trick where I introduce a tiny bit of language a little bit at a time in this interleave fashion. That was like sort of the innovation, the interleaving between Scheme and Mini Canren and the uh, int scheme interpreter and metacircular interpreters and all this stuff um, where I'm just constantly like dancing back and forth and it felt cool and it felt like I was being pretty clever um, and it just like didn't, didn't work. So I think part of the problem, you know, maybe that approach was unsound, but I think part of the problem was I was being cutesy. I was, I was being, I was like focusing on this technical trick in how to write it instead of just writing it. You know what I mean? So that's, um, yeah, I think that wasn't the way to go. Whereas here, <clears throat> you know, first of all, I already have the talk. Okay. And just listening to the talk and looking at the transcript immediately, I'm like, yeah, I should, you know, mention this thing or I should point the reader to these resources or, you know, yeah, this, this is a concept that's worth explaining and I could show these examples, that kind of thing. So, you know, it's like, um, I don't know. I, I know that talk backwards and forwards. I know so many of the techniques. Um, so it's just not, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't feel like I'm being cutesy. It's more like, you know, now onto the hard part. The hard parts are, are different. The hard parts are the same reason that it was hard for me to give that talk in a way. It wasn't hard because I didn't know the material because I did. Um, or it wasn't hard because I didn't have something to say or didn't have a point of view I had um, developed that was unique. 
I had all those things. It was hard because I had to screw up my courage and do some, you know, be willing to do something different that might have failed completely. You know, that, that could have really gone bust. And I knew there was going to be a big crowd and I, and I knew it was going to be recorded and I, I might just fall flat on my face. So I knew that. Um, and also just talking about my own stuff. I, you know, do I, do I feel, you know, comfortable or well, I didn't really feel comfortable, but I did it anyway, talking about my own stuff and, you know, being full of myself potentially. Um, and it's the same thing here. Like what, what feels hard about writing this book is, is screwing up my courage and saying, yeah, this talk is actually important. I stand by it. I stand by the ideas. I stand by the story and by the performance. And, uh, that's good enough for the basis of a book. And furthermore, I can connect a whole bunch of interesting ideas to that talk um, and write a book that uh, is of value and that communicates something I care about and I, where I have something to say and I have a unique point of view, at least in the big picture, a personal view, let's say, um, and that, that I, I, you know, I, I just feel like that's important. I, I want to share things. And uh, I think I can explain how these things are connected in a way that if you're not willing or not able to spend a huge amount of time in formal study, it's probably just not going to become apparent. Or, or even if you do spend all the time in formal study and get a PhD in programming languages or the equivalent, you know, you, you would, at that point, after 20 years of working on this stuff, you would have a different point of view and that's cool. And I'd be interested in hearing that talk and, and reading that book, but this is my point of view. And so I want to, I want to share my point of view. And if no one wants to read it, that's fine. If everyone wants to read it, that's fine too. And then, uh, the last thing I want to say is, uh, I want to thank everyone for their encouragement so far. Um, when I said, oh, yeah, duh, you know, this is the, a book I should write of the 11 I was going to write. So, I go, well, that should be book two. And originally I was going to make it book 11 because I need more experience. It's the same sort of thing, right? Like I don't have, I, you know, I don't really have time to prepare for this talk at Papers We Love. And, well, I'd been spending like 15 years or 14 years preparing you know, so I was prepared. I just had to screw up my courage and organize my thoughts a little. Well, same thing here. I have enough writing experience where I could write if I do this with all of my might, you know, in the Ken Atchity, um phrase. If I go after this with all of my might and I have my courage and conviction and I, you know, tell the story the way it needs to be told, then I can do something uh, that I think will be of lasting value. And um, when I mentioned that book two, I want to do the most beautiful program ever written, Focus in particular, um, you know, said that he wanted to read it. So that was, yeah, that, that I don't know. It's like weird. Just one person saying, one person who had written a book, <laughs> who had written a techno book saying that they wanted to read it. That was enough. And then, you know, um, my, uh, another friend, Ed Howland said, yeah, yeah, definitely. Two thumbs up. Um, so it was like, okay, we got two people, two people who say they want to read it. Uh, that's enough. That's enough encouragement. And then just all the encouragement about, keeping making videos even when it's hard and you know and and also things like uh the trackpad you know the apple trackpad that was suggestions like that and how to set up my keyboard and all all these other things uh feedback on video like the uh, audio quality and whatever it is you know all, all those little things um they make a difference so thank you for that and uh you know so this level of working in public, I feel comfortable with right now. I, I don't want to tie myself down to real specifics and saying this sentence has to go in or anything like that. Um, and, you know, anything I'm showing here could change. But that's that's what I'm thinking. Um, 
Do I feel comfortable sharing this level? You know, the the actual text right now. You know, like I like I've said before, it usually takes me four or five drafts rewritten from scratch to write, say, uh, an introduction or anything like that. Um, that's both coherent and has the point of view that I want. So, you know, I, I just don't want to share those things right now because I, I know my first couple of versions are probably going to really suck. Um, or even if they're, even if the writing is decent, it may not reflect the point of view I have. So I don't know. I don't, I don't want to commit to any, to anything in terms of sentences or whatever. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's what I'm thinking right now. And, uh, yeah, thank you for your encouragement. Um, yeah, see how, see how it goes. I'll probably reach some sort of crisis point at some point, because I think most books do reach that point where it's like, oh, you're at that part of the book where everything's horrible. And, you know, that that's one of the rules I've heard for writing dissertations is when you get the point you're completely sick of your dissertation and the topic and you're ready to drop kick it into the trash can that means you're probably most of the way done it's like you're you're getting getting close to the finish line but um usually it's going to feel horrible you know at, at least that's the thing i've heard from other people and that certainly was true true for me um but like i said so far this book this book's been relatively easy. I mean, I haven't written anything yet, but in some sense, I don't know, it feels like it's more like it's writing itself because, you know, I just spent so much time. And also, you know, I've been watching George R.R. R. Martin videos and also other other um, interviews with uh, writers. And he said that, you know, like there's a standard advice, write what you know, and he for fantasy, he didn't even know what that meant. You know, we're supposed to write about hobbits, hobbits because you know about hobbits. And he said that wasn't it at all. You know, for him, it's writing about human relationships and, you know, what what are what are actual politics like and real politics and international relations and, and, and things like that that he was, like, deeply attuned to. And for me, you know, obviously this is a topic that's been close to my heart for... 20 years and um so it's something i know you know it's like i don't know it at the level of i know everything it's like that's not that's not at all the case but that's also got nothing to do with it it's not that i know everything about continuations like not at all i still consider myself a beginner in all this but i've done enough of the work and i've spent so much time thinking about it and playing with it that i do have a, a point of view and so that part i think is easy it's like you know i can just talk about this stuff all day um you know one one hard part one part that's recurrent you know requiring some courage is for me also to not hold back because you know part of me feels like oh man you know yeah i, I can imagine writing this book but is that it? Like, is this the only thing I have to say, you know, or I'm going to spend the rest of my life making books about this one talk, basically. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, maybe I'll be out of ideas or out of things to talk about. Now, I think it's kind of ridiculous because, so first of all, I'm not writing a book at all, or I wasn't writing a book at all. So why am I complaining that I'm going to run out of things to write about if I haven't written, haven't even worked on a book in like six years? You know, that seems like, kind of silly complaint um but the other thing is well it's also kind of silly because like i said the talk ties into so many aspects of computing and programming languages and um ideas about computation and logic and math and programming and ties in, uh, ties into modern programming languages and all sorts of history and things like that um, there's so many tie-ins that, you know, it's like, you never get tired of that. That's like an evergreen topic. You know, there's, you pick any one of these topics and spend a lifetime studying them. So, you know, the idea that I'm going to run out of things to talk about, it's ridiculous, but 
that's part of the, you know, the hard part is screwing up my courage because I find that, you know, I don't know. There, there, there are some people who probably just don't have that part of them and they're just like always confident. I don't know, or at least outwardly confident. I'm like not like that at all in a way. But once I get started, if it's about something I care about, then I quickly forget that stuff. So like I said, you know, with it, with the talk at the papers we love, I was nervous until the first joke landed. And then I wasn't nervous. It was like, yeah, party time, nerd party time. So it's the same thing here. I think I just like, just got to get myself past um, these jitters and do what, what I need to do to tell the best story I can. And I don't know, someone, you know, that dude in Australia who uh, posted nasty comments on YouTube is upset at my book. Well, oh well, um, that's fine. Or someone thinks I'm a narcissist because I'm writing about my own talk. Well, that's fine too. And maybe I am, um, but it was a cool talk and it's a great story and it ties in the things that I love and I'm going to talk about it. So that's fine. If that makes me a narcissist, I'm a narcissist. Um, that's okay. So anyway, it's just like an attitude. I have to, you know, keep, keep reminding myself of these things. So, um, yeah. So in some sense it's been easy. I, uh, the other hard part has been kind of turning it off. Um, I'm not sure I want to turn it off, but, uh, you know, I was watching a little Starcraft, uh, ASL, Afrika Star League, uh, Brood War with, and I support Tastosis on Patreon. If those terms don't mean anything to you, it's a, uh, a video game, competitive video game played in Korea, uh, this particular tournament. And so I was watching that and, as I'm watching the matches, I had to keep rewinding over and over and over again because I wasn't paying attention to the game at all. I was like thinking about my book, and and then I'd I'd pause and then I'd write some notes to myself. And you know, I think that's good, um, but it's also like a little uncomfortable. Uh, but it's also just a good sign that 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 wasn't the case when I was like doing the uh, creative, idiosyncratic and creative thinking. It wasn't like that at all. And also, uh, when I was doing the Alpine, you know, Alpine style, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like I was thinking about it all the time. But this one I am. It's like, oh, yeah. And in fact, you know, it occurred to me I could probably write this book in a week if I had like a full week. If I took a week off, I, I could probably do a draft if I were really just focusing on the talk. Um, what I want to do, like I said, is... is um, have a second half where I talk about these topics in some depth and that I don't think I can do in a week cause I'm really not that fast writing. Um, so, you know, I don't know how long that takes. Maybe it takes a few months even, I don't know. But, um, my, my point is this isn't like a multi-year book. This should be a book that's, um, relatively fast. I think, you know, we'll see. I, I think the, I think the dangerous part will be scoping the discussion of these topics on the second half. Um, I think, I think I have to be careful or it'll turn into like some 700 page monstrosity. I don't want it to be like that. Um, you know, maybe I would make some follow-ups on some of these topics or something. I don't know. Maybe that's another book is the 700 page monstrosity. I don't think I'm not going to write a 700 page monstrosity. I hate those things. I never read them. Who wants to read 700 pages of scheme? This is ridiculous. Anyway, um, so I don't know, but I, I trust my judgment with this stuff. With this topic, at least I trust my judgment. Okay. I don't trust my judgment with everything. With this topic, I've got awesome judgment. Um, at least so I will claim. So there I don't have any lack of, <laughs> I may have lack of hum humility, but I actually think I have awesome taste, okay? There are lots of things I don't know, but I think I have great taste. Uh, I'm a legend in my own mind, as uh, one of my friends used to tell me. So I think I'll be okay with that. But, well, that's where we are. Um, and I'll keep working on it, and I'll give you an update 
uh, soon, I hope. All right, take care and thanks for the encouragement.